Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of 99 Names. We are now on session 28. So alhamdulillah, we are in the last three sessions. Uh, and one thing I wanted to lift up that uh, came in this, in this book of divine names, there's a beautiful uh, little line that said that, you know, through the divine names, we aim to know love and closeness to the divine and the eternal light present in and behind all manifestations. It kind of really just sums up literally the whole objective of going through these 99 names this time in Ramadan, uh, but also just what, what all is there, what all is there in creation, what all is there in the divine uh, that kind of intermeshes and within us. So just wanted to lift that up. But today, or sorry, yesterday we had gone over four names of Allah. Those names were Al-Muqsit, the righteous, the impartial, the equitable, Al-Jami, the gatherer, the one who brings together, Al-Ghani, the wealthy, the rich, and then Al-Muhni, the enricher. And so today we'll be covering uh, four more names of Allah. And those names are Al-Mani, Al-Dar, Al-Nafi, and Al-Nur. So keep an eye out for those when we're doing the Asma al-Husna. Uh, but what, before we begin with these names, of course, we will do our Asma al-Husna. And uh, with these names, we actually jump into the 90s of the names of Allah. So only uh, less than 10 or about 10 or so that are left. And so inshallah, we, we, are, we are just at the finish line here. So let us go ahead and begin the recitation of the Asma al-Husna. And I'll go ahead and share my screen. So before I begin, just remember that uh, that that line that I shared at the at the beginning that the, the the purpose we go through these names, the purpose of seeing these names is to be able to look at and be able to see how embedded the divine is in 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 our creation, in our world, and in, in, in everything that we do. Uh, all these sparks are there, and so it's not a detached. Um, relationship. It's a very connected one. We just sometimes have to uncover that. And let us take a look at these names and let us go through these names and reflect on them as we as we recite them in a means of connection, in a means of getting familiar, because I hope we've started to get familiar with them. Uh, we've gone through them almost 30 times now. So inshallah, they, they're becoming a little bit more familiar than before. So bismillah, let us begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus as-Salam المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرازق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع ما المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيد المقيت الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصي الهكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوكيل القوي المتين الولي الهميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المهي المميت الهي القيوم 
الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور الهادي البديء الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور so we begin with these with these names inshallah the names that we cover for today as i mentioned are almani the one who averts from harm the one who wards off the one who hinders the one who withholds adar the one who is the distressor the one who is the creator of harm the one who gives disadvantage anafi the one who creates that which is useful and good the one who gives advantage and anur the light and the illuminator so bismillah let us uh, let us go ahead and jump into these names here so Almani. Almani, as I mentioned, is the one who creates harm, or sorry, the one who uh, averts harm, the one who wards off, the one who hinders, the one who withholds. And the root of this name has the meanings of to stop, to detain, to keep from entering and passing, to hinder, to prevent, to restrain, all these concepts of holding back, of uh, blocking, prohibiting, anything that you can think of goes with that with that root of that name. And so Almani is the one that averts and wards off, um, but it is complemented with a giving quality that sometimes you think about um, a, a, a parent or um, someone warding off some kind of uh, harmful thing, it's keeping keeping you away from something. It may feel something might feel good. It might be it might be good for you, but it actually has uh, something bad in it, it down the line. And so Almani has that sense of uh, averting harm through protection and mercy. So when we talk about warding off evil, when we talk about, uh, you know, just keeping us away from that which uh, will ultimately harm us. And so uh, Almani really lifts that up. So when we when you think about like, you know, how, how can I be prevented from harm or what, how can I be averted from harm, but by hold, holding you back. And so, uh, what is given or held back, you know, it can feel negative because we wish for something else. So let's say if we we prayed for something and we 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 don't get that, you know, we we it's not it's not given to us if we prayed for you know a certain material thing or some kind of state or whatever it might be, and we're not given that. You know, oftentimes we feel that Allah is not answering our prayers. We feel that Allah is not answering us Allah is not there for us and uh, is is holding something back, and so it can feel really negative. But we, what we lift up in, in the sense of this is very similar to our discussion yesterday, that the scales of which we evaluate things, we, we can only do so much because we have a finite scale of justice. We have a finite scale of what is good and what is bad. And we have a finite scale of what is good and what is bad for us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who uh, creates these scales, is the one who creates everything beyond a measure. And so Allah knows that you know when something is held back, there is something more useful that will be given. And, uh, you know, you have the verse in the Quran that says, you know, perhaps you love a thing um, and it is bad for you. And perhaps uh, you hate a thing and it is good for you. And so, you know, we, we, we lift up these aspects of the, uh, the divine wisdom, the divine knowledge behind all things, not just things that go our way. Some things will not happen our way in life and it'll make us feel bad but in in the long run they're actually good for us maybe it's good you didn't get this kind of job maybe it's good that you didn't end up moving to this place or maybe it's good that uh you you didn't go uh or receive this thing or xyz thing so it's it's it's, it's looking out for us in a way that we can't even see uh and so the one who averts harm the one who wards off is one who can see far down the line 
Uh, so, you know, we can, in our vehicle on this journey of life, we can only see so far and make our judgment here. But Allah knows what is to come before, what is to come after. It's like this kind of premonition. And so we'll, we'll take us to another lane. We'll, we'll provide us some, some other means of getting there. And it may not be what we think is best, but it is in a way that averts that harm. It is in a way that wards off. It is in a way that hinders, but in order to help progress, in order to help transform. And so when we carry this quality, when we take in this quality, we become protective, we become cautious, not just of ourselves, we become cautious and protection, uh, protective of other people, of the things around us, we uh, become uh, protective of the negative things, even those which we see are marked as positive. So things like wealth, things like fame, things like material, uh, you know, just, just material wealth, but also just anything else that you can think of that looks good. It feels good. It on the books, it sounds good, but you can see how it inherently uh, has a, a negative aspect to it, that it could destroy some things. And so we really do want to lift that up. And this name, as I mentioned, is another way, warding off is another way of giving. Warding off is another way of providing. So when we see anything that is being warded off from us, we oftentimes use the term warring, warding off with warding off evil. But in a sense that if something is warded away from us or warded off or prohibited or restricted, not to see that in a sense that we didn't get something. Uh, when the, within the divine scale, within the divine wisdom, we see that as itself as being something that has been given. So this name will challenge us to open our minds up to become more conscientious to if we don't get all the things that we want in this world, we strive in this world, and we will surely get some things we surely won't get some things. Uh, but to look at the things that we don't get, and seeing what did we get out of those. And so it challenges us to look at things, look at the glass half full, uh, but also see things for what they are rather than just for their face value. So this name challenges us to do so. And so inshallah, we'll, uh, we, we want to see the glass more than half full, but we also want to uh, be able to see what all is behind uh, be, besides just that face value. And this goes into our next name. Next name uh, sometimes can be a little bit hard uh, to, to, to uh, it's, it's not as palpable because it's a, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very hard name sometimes to swallow. It's Adar. Adar is uh, the creator of harm, the one who gives disadvantage, the distressor. Uh, this is a, a, a divine name, of, uh, as I mentioned, with the, with the roots of to harm, to impair, to damage, to injure, to force. To compel, to oblige. So uh, it's definitely um, a, 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 a more, um, you know, a more significant name in, in that in the in the concept of uh, having these qualities of, of really, you know, being distressing. And so it can be distressing. Oftentimes, if we just hear this for the first time, that how can Allah be the Allah that uh, creates harm? Like you know, Allah is all loving. Allah is all these things. How can Allah create harm? But we remember, like with this name, and with so many names before, there's the divine names that have pairs. There's the reason that you have the divine names across the spectrum, because Allah is balanced. Allah is the God of the rainy days and the God of the sunny days. And Allah gives harm, not in any sense for uh, th those who seek Allah's pleasure, uh, but for any specific use, it's not to toy with the creation. Um, there, there is some benefit in it. There is something inherent that can be derived from it. But like I said, it goes back to how the humans see uh, our scales of justice, how we see our right and wrong, how we see our own confines of what is good, what is bad. Um, and we, we project that onto the divine. So if something doesn't go our way, we then associate the divine as being unjust or the divine as being wrong, uh, where, whereas we, we're not seeing everything for that full vision. And so an example of this is that, you know, when Allah gives harm, there's also something good and useful that comes about, which we'll talk about in the next name, An-Nafi. When Allah lowers as Al-Khafid, Allah lowers so that elevation can exist, so that you can be raised in al rafi When Allah contracts in Al-Qabid, Allah then soothes that and it provides that, that soil that soothes for expansion in al basit And when Allah humiliates, it's humiliating to bring forth an honor, 
al muiz and so as i mentioned allah is balanced allah does not do these things just to just to you know out of sheer uh, ego or just to, to humiliate the creation or anything like that there is a reason for that especially for those who are sincere in their faith who sincerely believe uh, in allah um, that there is a balance because like i said you know allah is not just one attribute allah is the entire spectrum and so many more beyond these 99 names that we may not even have our words for we may not even be able to articulate um, or have a appropriate uh, lexicon around the uh, these names and so allah is all of those things and so when we when we look at that yeah allah is going to cover this but not in the sense that Allah is either red or uh, you know either green all these different things Allah is everything and so we 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 come to terms to know that every circumstance every situation that we face in life that we face in life it has some kind of wisdom has some kind of opportunity for us to transform and to grow as human beings physically and spiritually and so what this shows us is that Allah is holistic Allah's involvement in our in our life is holistic. Allah is not just there in the times when we are having uh, success. Allah is not just there in the times that we're uh, without any success or we're, we're downtrodden, um, or that Allah has left us in those times, or that Allah has left us in the other times. It's that Allah is always there in the good, in the bad, uh, and that how do we maintain that relationship in acknowledging that? Because sometimes when we hit rock bottom, we feel that Allah has abandoned us, and sometimes when we uh, are at our peak, we feel that you know Allah is either with us and Allah can't ever abandon us or anything like that. I'll lift up a quick uh, saying of the Prophet I think we mentioned this in a previous session that you know I went up to uh, the the heavens and I met uh, Allah. Allah was there, and uh, Yunus alayhi salam went into the belly of a whale in the in the depth of the ocean, and there's that's where he met Allah. Or he found Allah, or Allah was there, and so it it tells you that regardless of where we might be in terms of our status, in terms of just our physical position, in terms of our spiritual position, Allah is always there. And so this uh, name, as I mentioned, has the, those roots of harming, impairing, and damaging. But this damage and harm is not inflicted from Allah without some divine wisdom or that it has some useful purpose for us in the grand scheme of things. That everything, as I mentioned, has a inherent wisdom and opportunity, but an opportunity to heal an opportunity to transform. Uh, this name be belongs with the next name we'll discuss, Anafi, so that we can see the wholeness of the divine unity, of the divine uh, being, that it's not just one side, it's not just Allah is just all giving and just giving, 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 or all this, but Allah is also the other side, and that, that, in that we find balance. And so there is good from Allah, there's evil from Allah, but the cause of the evil is, is the human being's doings. And so we, we balance ourselves out in this way that uh, we, we, we direct our fear, we direct our hope, we direct our negative, we direct our positive towards Allah, because we, 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 it means that we are free of all uh, our fears and expectations and attachments that we depend on Allah solely, solely for those times that we're doing good, but also solely for those times that we're doing bad. And so uh, the Prophet ﷺ, um, lifts up that, uh, you know, it, it, I believe this is a hadith in a sense that, you know, Allah is the one who treats harm, whether to purify our heart and to prepare it for higher stages or as a consequence of our deed. And what damages on one hand can indeed be useful on the other. And what I, what I want to lift up here is that, uh, as we close out with this name, is the Prophet at Atta'if at the, the, uh, the day that he described it as his most difficult day. The, the most difficult day in his life, mo mo all, most of us have heard the story of uh, him, him leaving, being pelted out, uh, driven out by the, uh, you know, the youth of the town uh, on, on commission of the elders, uh, being stoned out, you know, being driven out, uh, and his shoes being filled with blood, his shoes being filled with blood and him finding refuge, sitting down under a tree uh, and, and just, you know, the, the one thing we always take away from that story is that, oh, you know, the angel came and said, do you want me to basically like level uh, these towns and in between the mountains, I can do that. And the process I'm saying, no, um, you know, you can go ahead and uh, just leave them be because their, their children might be uh, Muslim, their children might be the ones who accept Islam. And so what we don't talk about, though, is that at that same time, right, uh, when he, he, he says this, 
he actually is sitting under a tree. His shoes are stuck to his foot because when blood dries it, 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 it coagulates, it, it sticks to your feet, it sticks. Um, and he's sitting there under a tree and he, he has a frank conversation and a frank dua with Allah in which he complains to Allah about his weakness. He complains to Allah about the lack of resources, of his insignificance before the people. And he asks to Allah, who are you going to turn me over to? You know, are you, are you displeased with me? And if you're not displeased with me, I, you know, your, your peace is more sufficient for me than anything. And so we think about this, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I, I generally don't like to say that, hey, because so-and-so is doing this, you should, you, sh you should invalidate what you're feeling. No, you should absolutely validate the difficulties of this life and everything. But this is just to lift up that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the most beloved to Allah, was put through some really trying times, was put through those times which weren't just the uh, sunny days, which were very, very rainy days. And so uh, not from the fact that the Prophet ﷺ went through this and that we should, you know, just, just straighten up and be like, hey, what, what you know, what, what's wrong with you? That uh, the Prophet ﷺ went through this, you should, you should uh, have some more patience in a sense that take comfort in the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was put through these types of trials. And so will Allah not also put us through trials? We will go through other trials in our life. They might not be as difficult as Ta'if. They might not be to that level, but they might they will be trials. They will be difficulties. But we take comfort in the fact that Allah is there in those times because he's put the uh, most difficult days on uh, to the people that are most beloved. And so we try to find some solace in that. The next name we go into that complements this name, as I mentioned, is Anafi. Anafi is the one who creates that which is useful and good, the one who grants advantage, the proprietors. And uh, Adar and Anafi help us reconnect and lean back on Allah as the sole attachment of our hearts because we see from where the harm comes from, but we also see where the relief comes from. It's from the same source. And so we don't think that we can outmaneuver Allah. We can, you know, uh, just outsmart Allah and, and make something into a different situation than it has been. Uh, we, we remove ourselves from those attachments and we put our faith in Allah. And so the root of this name has the meanings of to being useful, uh, to be useful, to be beneficial, to be advantageous, to be of help, to be of avail, to utilize uh, and to bolster and to turn into an advantage. And so this name really does bring about a healing in a sense uh, that evil, it, it also lifts up that uh, from connecting with Adar, that evil is not the opposite of Allah. Evil is that resistance to Allah. Everything is made of, a, of that same energy, uh, but evil is something much more significant than just a black and white concept. Evil has uh, these uh, these these roots that that can sometimes be manifested and look like they're good, but it's actually something that resists Allah. And so, what it shows us is that there is uh, a wholeness. There is an entire wholeness to the creation. There's a wholeness to everything that is there, of which the source is Allah. Um, and an example of these is the names of Adar and An Nafi, which are often used together to acknowledge the way that balance and harmony are established and maintained. These are opposing, seemingly opposing attributes, um, but they're often inseparable. Um, and it's, it's, it's because uh, when Allah is one thing, Allah also has the complement that is there as well. And so uh, Allah is the one who helps and grants all advantages in an nafi Allah is the one who creates all that produces at benefit and usefulness is the one that grants all favorable circumstances and the one who confers all benefits and is the one who continually blesses all of creation with goodness and that is useful and the one who through whom all needs are fulfilled but also the uh, the opposite also the complement to that and so from an nafi and al-dar we are able to see just through these two names a glimpse at the divine unity because Allah is a complement in these two things in that Allah is the one who creates harm, but also Allah is the one that creates that which is useful and good. Um, and it's not that, hey, if you just live a life just like this, that which is, um, you know, in, in, in a sense, just, just uh, benefiting towards Allah or just praying that you won't have some kind of harm befall you. But 
also to the same degree that these names are intertwined, that's something that will be useful and good because the harm that comes is not just to harm you. It's, it's a harm that uh, comes about useful and good. And we think about the Prophet at Taif, that what, 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 what benefit could have came from the, the literal harm that uh, this person had faced, but also the psychological harm, the trauma that this person had faced. What is, what is any good from it? And we, we see in the prayer of the Prophet at that time, um, you know, trying to trying to make sense of that, struggling with that and, and trying to find the benefit in this, but finding that sense that it takes that. And so if, a, if someone at the level of the Prophet faith is able to wrestle with something like this, we find solace in being able to rest, wrestle with those difficult moments, not just, you know, just putting them behind our head and just being like, okay, I'm going to just go in uh, eyes closed and just thinking that this will be, this will be uh, of benefit and whatnot. No, you, you want to wrestle with that. You want to find uh, a law in this, but you want to show that conviction that's there. And so as we go from this name to our final name, uh, we go into the final name of Anur because Allah becomes that light. Allah is the light that, that guides us through these times, through those times of difficulty and through those times of, uh, of, of success. And so Anur is the light. Anur is the illuminator. It has these roots of flowering, of blossoming, to be in bloom, to light, to illuminate, to fill with light, to furnish with lights, uh, to enlighten, um, to clarify, to be revealed. And so we think about this name and our hearts sometimes just really melt because it's just, it, it has these connotations of a very positive, very, um, very peaceful type of connotation that is there. And so Anur is the divine light that is the basis for all of existence. And see all of existence because it guides us, it guides creation in the darkness that is our earthly journey. Because we remember in a previous session, we talked about how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and commands us in the Quran that return, that you know, we, we, we came from Allah and to Allah we return. And we, we're in this journey, we're in this part of our lives that is finite, that is defined by pain, that is defined by uh, limitations and all these things. And we, it, it can essentially be parallel to a type of darkness because it's away from Allah. And we see that, uh, you know, in this return, we return to this light. And it's very interesting that the words nur and nar come from the same root. So paradise and hell essentially come from the same substance, but one connotates a concept of closeness, a concept of light and illumination that, that is healing. And one is of separation. One is of, uh, of, of a burning, not a maybe a literal fire you can interpret as, as you would like, but not as a literal sense, but also in the sense of a, a burning desire to not be separated, a burning that comes from being separated. When you're separated from a loved one and when you're taken away from a loved one, you can see the burning anxiety. You can see the burning sentiments inside. And so you think about the concept of heaven and hell, not so much as fire and brimstone and just uh, you know golden streets and angel wings and all this stuff. You think of it in the concept of separation and closeness to the divine and what that brings. When, when you're close to your loved one, when you're cl sincerely close to your loved one in the arms of your loved one, you feel comforted. You feel just things are illuminated, things are good. When you are apart from them, you feel that burning desire inside yourself and just so many things coming about that. And so his name, Anur, fills our hearts with humility. It fills our hearts with softness and reason. And we become warm. We become warm like the sun warms us on a cold day when we go outside and you just feel that there's a little bit of warmth in, in a cold world. And so Anur is that which brings uh, awakening from sleep. It's that which brings non-existence to existence. It is true guidance, and it's a guidance that works by purifying the heart. It's not a normal light. It's not like the one that, it's, I've, that I've got here or any of the ones that we can just turn on with a switch. It's a divine light that is within us, but it's still beyond. So we have hints of it, we've got sparks of it, but uh, in order to really discover it, in order to really being able to see it, we have to do a lot of heart work. Uh, and we have to purify our heart because when we purify our heart, we purify the body. And so our eyes need physical light to see. If I was to turn off any of the lights uh, in anywhere at, at you know the peak of darkness, I wouldn't be able to see much. I might be able to have an idea of where I'm at, but still at the end of the day, I'm in complete darkness. So our eyes need physical light to see. 
but our hearts and our spirits need that divine light to see, not just to see, but to know things. And so if we are walking around with our eyes closed and it's, it's dark outside and we can't see anything, you'll probably say, hey, why don't you open your eyes so that you can at least try and see something? It makes common, it's just common sense. So when we, when we navigate this world with a uh, cloud on our hearts, when we navigate this world with a uh, kind of darkness on our heart, a kind of uh, just, just a kind of enfolding on our heart that covers it, this, this seal on our hearts, how easy will it be for the heart to then see the divine light? How difficult will it be? And so it, this name really prompts us to do that heart work that's there. Uh, and we've talked about how each of these names in, in some way, shape or form, target the heart, target the heart by, uh, by bringing us to do things that help us purify the heart, by helping us be people who are generous, by helping us be people who are uh, mindful, by helping us be people who are loving. And all these things, these attributes of Allah that Allah has created creation with, we internalize those uh, and we recognize those and we use those as a mean to purify our heart, not for any other purpose, but to connect and to reconnect and to recognize the divine. So inshallah, we conclude with these names and we will begin with the zikr but as i mentioned uh we we had crossed into the the 90 mark uh and inshallah now we just have a few names left and so by in, in the next two sessions inshallah we will be concluding um so let us go ahead and uh begin with the zikr here and for one one of the final times that we do it let's internalize these names and where we are at this moment and how these names manifest around us and also within us as a means to connect to allah so bismillah let us begin La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Almani, 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 Almani. Yamani, 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 Yamani. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Adar, 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 La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Annafir, 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 annafir. Ya nafi, 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 ya nafi. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. An-nur, 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 an-nur. An-nur, 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 an-nur. Ya nur, 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 ya nur. 
La ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah Allah 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 la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah Allah 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 so inshallah everyone please uh, go out whether you are here in the space whether you are watching live whether you're watching in the future and recognize that anything that comes to us in life that uh, comes to us whether of a difficulty whether of a positivity there's always a hidden meaning behind it our faith challenges us to wrestle with that to, to look behind what is there what is there as a means of healing as a means for transforming so inshallah we'll continue our discussion tomorrow same time assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh